Hey, hey, everybody. It is after 5. Well, yeah, it's about 5.40. 5.40. And we are going to have a Facebook Live Supercell, the old-fashioned way, right here in the back of the store in the board. Lots more comics to be up at one time. Lots more going down. We ask you all to, uh, of course, like the Games of Comics page, Mouse Games of Comics, which surely you've done at this point. And, of course, share out this feed. Share it out everywhere you can. Every public share you do is another chance to win our hourly giveaways. Dun, 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 dun. All right, I'm going to share it myself real quick before we get everything started. Put my sleeves up. So we're going to be moving some books. i got to have movement. All right. Post that. Ray and Alan shared. Hey, Alan, how's it going, man? What are you up to, Ray? Uh oh. Um, one other thing I'm probably gonna. Need. Well, I don't. I think I can get by with this. Um, that's a phone charger, but I think I'll be okay. Um, this is only five forty five till eight. 30, uh, I'd probably be okay. I need the uh, iPhone one. I gotta have one of those blue ones or the pink ones or whatever. Yeah, you're good. All right, so thank you guys for sharing. I appreciate that. How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, in the close-up window, what you're going to see there, that is Mace Windu. That is an episode one Mace Windu figure with a little com check chip. You'd basically plug the figure on there. You'd run over the scanner. It would talk or make a noise, do whatever. Regardless, that is a Mace Windu figure with lightsaber and cloak for $6. I have a number of uh, Star Wars figures from that same era that I'll keep moving and selling as long as we're selling them. $6 for that Mace Windu. See if this one reaches. Uh, okay, it does reach. I'll plug it in if I need to. All right. They're all saying, glad to see that we're back here. Yeah. Well, we are back. We are back. Um, okay, so I'm going to put out some comic books because that's what this whole thing's about. So we're going to do some of that. First up, we got Spawn issue number 10. This is Spawn number 10 featuring Cerebus, the aardvark. And uh, it's black and white, like the Cerebus comics, is in color in the strip. And, of course, inside's in color as well. Issue 10, early issue of Spawn. It is just $6. That is going to be the A book for right now. Thanks for the likes and shares. Jeff, what's up, man? Hey, Tommy. This is the Infinity War issue number one. It is from 1992, First Strike. First issue of Infinity War for just $5. That is the B-Book. Thank you, Quentin. I appreciate the shares. Next up for C, we are going to put out Cable. Cable number one. It does have the uh, gold foil logo up top. And uh, gold around the harness, all the stuff there on cable. It's going to be just $5. It's going to be the C book. B for five. All right. Um, that ought to be more thousand. Thank you, Jonathan. What was that anyway? What was that B book? Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Check us if anything else like that. I don't right now, but we'll see what's up. All right. I'm going to put a new B book out on the board. Let's see what we can do. Let's do. Uh, Batman and Robin. This is Batman and Robin, issue number 15 from DC Comics. Uh, this is the Death of the Family issue, and that is the uh, it's a die-cut cover. That is the Joker's face that he wore as a mask for a while. If you pull the die-cut away, it actually pulls off, and you can see Robin underneath uh, as drawn by Greg Capullo. This is a first print issue, and it is going to be just, you guessed it, $5. Maybe you didn't guess it. I don't know. It's tough to say. It's 5 bucks. 5 bucks. Do I have any Dragon Balls? Uh, I do, Tommy. We have the small ones, 
are uh, five dollars, and we have the large ones. I think are fifteen. Let's say fifteen. Fifteen on the big ones. And then we have a set. We have a set of all seven Dragon Ball in a big magnetic case. That one I think is uh, it's like hundred and twenty-five bucks or something. I believe. If you'd like them, though, they are in the front of the store. You claim them with the price. We'll get them for you and uh, do you good. All right. Armando, are you wanting the B-Book for $5? Just put a B5 in the, in the comments if you'd like that. That way we know that you're, uh, you're wanting the book. As far, uh, you could be asking what B is. I don't, uh, that's the only thing. Uh, it is the Batman and Robin Death of the Family Issue 15. All right, this is going to be $6 for... Oh, yeah, Armando does want this one. All right, $5 to Armando. Yeah, you may have to uh, rebag and board those. Also, we'll do new bags and board after that. I have a handful of them. Okay. Thank you, Armando. We got that for you, sir. This is Uncanny X-Men, issue number 300. Please answer the phone. Um, it does have the uh, foil logo cover. Right there. Nice and shiny. Uh, John Romita Jr. artwork. That is uh, Wolverine, Cyclops, Bishop, Storm, and Jean Grey on the front. And it is going to be $6. $6 for B. Uh, Jonathan got the previous one, Ed. Any slabs today or first appearances? No slabs today. First appearances, maybe. I'm not entirely sure what I've got out here, so I will keep an eye out, though. Pretty good, Joshua. Pretty good. Yeah, it was a different book, Ed. It apparently is. It apparently is. I like that. I like it when we have the ones that everybody are after. All right. This is uh, the new D book is going to be the Invincible Iron Man. This is the Invincible Iron Man, issue 79. It is a 25-cent cover. Midnight on Murder Mountain. You interfered, hero, and thus you must die. Crush him, Kazar. Let Iron Man become the final victim of Dr. Kararkil. Uh, not sure about that name. But uh, the fact that he's Kazar, and he's really not. He's a big, huge, giant, bald freak here. But he's uh, crushing Iron Man. It is issue number 79. It's tagged for $29.99. But uh, somebody bought this for cheaper, and they didn't pick it up. So I'm going to put it out for the price that they claimed it for. This is uh, Invincible Iron Man 79 for $15. We're going to set that right there. Can you get true Dragon Balls? Which ones you want, Tommy? The uh, $5 small ones or the $15 larger ones? Let me know. Let's see, what is all over here? <laughs> Trying to find everything here. Hang on a minute. Robert is a dance, 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 dancing machine. Hey, I dig it. <laughs> Any key walking dead? Uh, Dwayne, I might have uh, some 100s in here, but that's probably going to be it, man. We're about tapped on uh, most of those. This is Evil Ernie, issue number one from 1997 in Chaos Comics. Destroyer preview number one. That's going to be $3. That is going to be the ebook. Would you look at the two dollars and small Dragon Balls? Uh, yes. Go ahead and grab two for Tommy, the small ones. Bring the little cup back here. And then grab me a, uh, grab me a four-star regular size Dragon Ball. Okay, so that would be $2 for the Dragon Ball. Yes. All right, Tommy, we're going to get those for you. We well, really shouldn't compare the large ones to the small ones. It's really, it's Unfair. it's all nature. I mean, nobody can help it. It is what it is. Uh, we are going to get those Dragon Balls back here, though, to show them off to you guys. They are pretty awesome, I got to say. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, Dana B is... Uncanny X-Men 300 for six. 
And C is cable number one for five. This is Secret Invasion, second printing variant, number one. So it's number one, second printing. They did a different cover for it, but hey, it's still a second print, so I'm going to drop it even lower than cover. It is just $3 for Secret Invasion, number one. Three bucks. And now that they, uh, I guess they're announcing it maybe tomorrow. That's the rumor, that they're announcing the uh, Disney-Fox merger. Um, they might have the scrolls back, so they could actually do some type of Secret Invasion storyline in the movies. B and C to Dana. All right, Dana. Um, in the future, for anything that you want to claim, you can just put like um, like B. This one was B6, like six. Just put B6 or C5, just the letter and the amount, and we'll pull them for you that way. I'm going to write your name on these. There's one for Dana and another. Thank you much for getting these. A couple good purchases, I think. I think these were both books that um, someone else had uh, like previously claimed and then didn't pay for. So they had a price on the back of them, so I put them out for cheaper than that price. So you got a sweet hookup. So how is everybody's Wednesday night tonight? Let me know what you guys are doing. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, it's a guy, it's a buddy of mine I went to school with. He um, he worked in factories and stuff after school and got married, did stuff. And after a while, he was like, you know what? I always wanted to be a barber. I'm going to go back to barber school and do the deal. And I was like, man, that's awesome. You're choosing to do the thing you want to do and take a chance. So I always go to him all the time. Name's Chad Curry at Jack's Barbershop in Somerset, Kentucky. Don't know how local you are to that. But, uh, but man, he, he's, he's good. He's good. I, okay. Thank you. Um, we do have uh, Pop Shamir. We do. Anything in particular you're looking for, man? Uh, no, all in the same shipment, Quentin. Basically, everything is from the same day. So on, like, say, today's Wednesday, whether we had to sell at 11 or 2 or whenever, everything all the way up through Wednesday combines, and then Thursday morning will be all packed together. Same for Thursday, all day. That's why, that's the benefit, is that's why we don't have you pay till the next day. That way, if you hop on any sales during the day, your stuff combines up. All right, did you already get two of them for uh, Tommy? Yep. All right, all right. Tommy's got his Dragon Balls. Let me show you these Dragon Balls. These are the Dragon Balls. These are normally eight dollars a piece. As you can tell, they are not bouncy or soft. This is the four-star Dragon Ball right here. They're uh, fairly small. They're kind of a resin with the stars inside. Uh, these are five dollars a piece, and you can let me know what star numbers you want or whatever. I guess. Uh, also, we've got these Dragon Balls. These are quite a bit bigger. As you can see, these are basically like your replica ones. They come in the plastic box, the little base, and in there in a plastic bag to kind of keep them from just getting fingerprints and just stuff all over them. Um, and then, uh, let's see, those are five. These are normally 27, normally 27 for the larger Dragon Balls. Uh, I'll do these tonight for, uh, let's say, 22. 22. And then we also have this smaller set of the Dragon Balls. You open this thing up, it's got a magnetic front to it. And you open it up, and there they all are inside. These are the blue ones. That's right. The blue Dragon Balls. The Dragon's blue Mystic Balls are right here. Um, you get all of them together. Uh, this set is $33. If somebody wanted it tonight, I'd do it for 30 bucks for this set. And these are the blue ones. These are... Uh, uh, I forget what they were in the show. There are some blue ones, but I can't remember how they're around. Sun graduates from College Friday. That is awesome, Jeff. Congrats, man. <laughs> window in the window. I didn't mean to do that, Mark. 
But we'll pretend I did. We'll pretend I did. All right. This is uh, $19, which is down from the $25 price tag currently on it. This is The Walking Dead issue 100. This is Deshaun Phillips variant cover featuring uh, Rick Michonne and Carl surrounded by zombies. Sean Phillips, of course, does the art in Criminal and uh, Killer Be Killed, one of my favorite books. Uh, this is the first appearance of Negan. It is the first appearance of his Bat Lucille and the death of Glenn. It is $19 for The Walking Dead 100. That is the C book. Find something else to put up here. I don't know what it was in this. I'm going to open it up and see. Some type of bundle situation. But I'm going to look at it. Okay. So we got... Bitch Planet Triple Feature number three. The Flash 27. Doctor Strange 22. Punisher War J Journal 27. And Bionic Man Issue 20. That is not a bad... Uh, that is not a bad bundle at all, actually. I'm going to put that back in here. And it's got a price tag on it. Whether it was meant to be have that price tag on it or not, that's the price tag it's going to get on it. Oh, if I can get this off here. It is going to be $4. $4 for B. Now, I told you all the books in that bundle. It's good books. Good books. It was just kind of already together in this box, so. All right. This is the first appearance of Kane, also known as uh, Weapon 10, I guess. Or the new Weapon X. I forget what he's going to be. Anyway. It's also the second appearance of Deadpool. Which I feel like is probably the bigger uh, selling point on it. First Kane. Second appearance of Deadpool. Very fine plus condition. X-Force issue number two for just $15. That's going to be the G book. B for four to Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. That was a good deal. Oh, John Thompson just missed it. We got Johns battling it out. I like it. This book is tagged for $30. I think I can do better than that. But I'm going to show it to you anyway. It's pretty awesome. This is Aquaman issue 37. 12 cent Silver Age issue of Aquaman. Uh, when the sea dies. And that's right. The sea's all dried up. All these animals are dying. There's Aqualad and Mera. Aquaman's like, nah, I can do without the water. It doesn't matter. But the others, they, they cannot. They cannot. Um... You have some wear here at the spine uh, throughout. You got a kind of a mid-crease here. A little wear to the edges. The coloring is great, though, and there's a crease mark here. We're going to say that's good condition. We're going to put it out for just 24 bucks. That is going to be the B book. $24 for Aquaman. Let somebody request some... Uh, some sweet um, 90s Batman earlier. Well, guess what? I got one right here. This is Batman 501 from 1993. The second ever appearance of Azrael as Batman. It is just $2. That is H. Yeah, not really showing any on our end, Dustin. You may have to refresh everything. 
Oh, Armando just missed it. Kenneth got that one. Thank you, Kenneth. Um, let's see. Do we get new figures today? Um, we got the 2008 Comic Con exclusive Batman. It's the uh, like the Andy Kubert Batman from um, the storyline where Damien first showed up. It looks pretty cool. Um, we got the uh, Rick on his horse from The Walking Dead, the metal figure. We got restock in of the large Negan figures that we've sold out of. Um, that was it action figure wise though this week. C19 to Tasha. Uh, C is right here. There we go. Thank you, Tasha. She does like some Walking Dead. Still have the Spider-Man Wolverine comic from earlier. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We um we had, we moved spots back here to the back again, and I honestly don't think that came back here with us. But if I see any, I'll do my best to uh to put them up there for you. All right. This is uh this comic was limited to one hundred issues. That's right. One hundred copies. One hundred copies, I should say. I won't hurt issues. It won't be rare at all. 100 copies. We're going to put it out for $35. This is Lady Death Apocalypse, the Century Edition. This is uh, issue number four, cover C, limited to 100, right there on the cover. We're going to put it out for just $35. $35 for that one. That's the C book. What is G? Uh, Joshua, this is X-Force issue number two. This is the uh, first appearance of Kane and the second ever appearance of Deadpool for just This is uh, Conan the Barbarian issue 273 from Marvel. It is Conan the Punisher. Oh, that's why. It's written on the back and why it's more expensive. This is the last issue. This is the last issue of the uh, Marvel run. It wasn't selling well. There's not a ton of these because about the time they weren't really putting out a lot. This is the final issue of Conan. I was wondering why it was priced a little bit higher. It's not that much higher. But higher than what we normally put a Conan book out for. It is $6. That is going to be the H book. Wow, this is old. Here's another older Iron Man book. This is Iron Man issue 14. Issue 14 of Iron Man. Um, it does have spine wear to it. Chip piece there. Fold piece here. Some wear. Coloring is great. It is issue 14. 12 cent issue. Silver Age Iron Man. But we're going to put it out. Issue 14 of Iron Man for $17. That is going to be I. This is Detective Comics 622. Dick Sprang artwork on this one. That is going to be $2. For that issue of Detective, that's going to be your J-Book. Were there any, um, Shamir asked about action figures. Were there anything you were particularly looking for, Shamir? Anything you thought came out that you are in, in need of? Mm -hmm. 
So remember everybody to like and share the feed. We're gonna do a giveaway. Uh, we'll do a giveaway about six thirty. We'll do a giveaway about six thirty. We'll do our first one then. All right, so. I'm going to take down the mace window. For six. You never know when we're going to have Star Wars fans on the feed. I saw this box Star Wars figures. Like, hey, we'll try to sell some of these. It's cool. This is uh, Daredevil, The Man Without Fear, issue number eight. Soaring to still greater heights of glory. And that is him, Daredevil, taking on Stiltman. That, of course, is the first appearance of Stiltman. It's Daredevil number eight. Come on, people. There weren't that many. Um... <laughs> It is uh, $70 for this one. There is some fade to the cover overall, but the condition is great. I'm going to bring it up front and show it to you real close on that camera, and then we're going to put it in the close-up spot for a bit. So there we go. <laughs> In the uh, MO anonymous commentator. Uh, no, it's just you. It's Amy. Amy is the uh, the oh. tracker and caller tonight. Sorry. You sent a PM. All right, we'll we'll check it, John. All right, up here, the A book for $6. That is the spawn issue, Tim. I'll take that down for right now. Um, there was something I was going to put out here. Yeah, here we go. This is $4. This is Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, issue number one. The second, uh, this is the first issue. This is the second uh, mini series for Batman and the Turtles. Kevin Eastman does this cover. You got Donatello, Batman. Got the bat signal Gotham there behind him. Four dollars for that. Do a bundle on B, G, and D. B, G. I know. All right. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So that's thirty. All right. That's normally uh. $54. I'll do all three of them for um, 48 bucks. 48 bucks. A4 to Colin Foss. Thank you, Colin. Almost poured a bunch of thumbtacks out. That would not have been good. Sold for 48. All right. Thank you, sir. Let me get these together here for you. There's some nice books.
with Josh. I bundled the price on these, but what I did, I broke that down. I did like a 20 a 20 and an $8 book just so that way. On your invoice, you'll see three books instead of a bundle of three. Uh, but that's just so that way I didn't want to like tape those together and risk messing anything up. So I'm just going to, I wrote them back. I just separated it that way. So the discount is still there and present. Thank you, sir. All right, so we got here. Uh, okay, this is a cool one. This is America's Best Comics. ABC TV. That's right, ABC. 25 cent cover, but I'm pretty sure it's still Silver Age. It's just oversized. Um, Saturday morning cartoon carnival presenting an all-star ABC animated power pack lineup you can't miss. This comic's got Casper the Friendly Ghost, The Amazing Spider-Man, The Fantastic Four, King Kong, George of the Jungle, and Journey to the Center of the Earth all in this one book. Uh, it is tagged for $35. But I can do better than that. We're gonna do twenty nine bucks. Twenty nine bucks on the ABC America's Best Comics. It's gonna be the A book for twenty nine. This is another Walking Dead issue 100. This is the first appearance of Negan, the first appearance of Lucille, and the last appearance of Glenn. And this is the Todd McFarlane cover. That is Rick as a zombie over Lori's grave. Going to shoot himself in the head with a gun. I feel like McFarlane's giving the zombie a little too much credit. But it is $19. It is the Todd McFarlane issue of the Walking Dead 100. It is the first print. It is $19. That is going to be the V-Book. What issue is the uh, ABC TV? I think it's just a one. Yeah, there's no actual number on it that I can see. So I'm pretty sure it's just a uh, one-shot, one-and-done thing they put out. Yeah, that's uh, that was put out as a bunch of ABC TV shows. The cartoons at the time are just all in that uh, in that issue. Knocking over tape dispensers. This is the Amazing Spider-Man 218. Uh, it is from 1981. 50 cent cover. In Manhattan, stalks a monster. And there's Spidey on the front and a big heat monster, I guess. It is Amazing Spider-Man 218. Is in fine condition. It's going to be ten dollars, just ten bucks for issue two eighteen. We're going to put that out there as the D book. What year? Um, I don't know, man. Let me get out and check and see. It's early. Ooh, it's got the flying nun on the back. Um. The comics in here are, they do look pretty decent. Um, pages are really nice. Um, okay. America's Best TV Comics, 1967. Um, and yeah, no issue number, so apparently it's just, it is what it is. Uh, there is a slight crease here on the cover. You got a slight crease here on the back. Uh, and a little indention down the middle, almost like a subscriber's thing. There is a little bit of wear to the spine. It does have actual spine on it where you can read America's Best Comics, now that I'm holding it here. However, the interior is impeccable. It's perfect. Um, but I didn't know about that spot on the back because it was in the bag and board. So what I'm going to do right now is... Uh, 
I'm going to uh, mark that down, actually, from 29. We'll put it out at uh, 26. Eighty one. Nope, sixty seven. I don't know. What are you talking about, Quinn? <laughs> All right. It's gonna be twenty six dollars. All right, Maurice, if you'd like it, just put a A twenty six in the feed and we'll make sure to grab it for you. I even marked it down three bucks. Did the X-Men featuring Emma Frost? I don't think any of those are back here right now. Um, I'll keep an eye out, though, if I see them back here. A26. There we go. Thank you, Maurice. Good purchase, my friend. This next uh, A book is going to be a little bit cheaper than that one. It is going to be $2. This is the Punisher issue 23, Punisher War Journal 23, actually. When the Punisher's through with these ancient ruins, the past will be history. I guess he's just going to destroy classic ruins. Way to go. Way to go, Castle. It is uh, two bucks. Two bucks for his destruction. Back in all right this is the mighty thor 165 i think all of you are pretty well aware about the infinity war and adam warlock and the... surely he's going to be in that thing right anyway this is the mighty thor 165 that is a silver age 12 cent cover of thor him and that is him he's shirtless but that is adam warlock and that is thor and he's got a I think it's Sif, I guess. Yeah, she's got the purple and white on. Early days. This is the Mighty Thor, issue 165. Uh, this tag was on it. It is the first full appearance of Adam Warlock. Not a first cameo. First full appearance is right here. And we are going to put it out for just... $24. $24 for the Mighty Thor. Uh, it does have spine wear to it throughout, and there is some wear around the sides. Coloring of our all is pretty good, but there is wear to the cover. $24. First full appearance of Adam Warlock. All right, what all we got up here? Let me move some books around. Move some books around. All right, no Lady Death fans for 35. One in 100, limited copy. I really can't uh, do much, do much less than that on that thing. All right, for the C book, we're going to put out Thundercats. This is Thundercats The Return, issue number five. And uh, Benez does the artwork and the cover here. And there is uh, Lino taking on Mumra. With, he's got the Sword of Omens fully extended out. It is going to be $4 for the C book for the Thundercats.
Okay, okay. So we're about five minutes away from our first giveaway, so be sure to uh, like, of course, the Madhouse Games and Comics page up top and continue to share this feed out, get more eyeballs on this content. And, uh, of course, we're going to give away something awesome here very soon. Do we have any Storm comics? I'm pretty sure we do. I'm pretty sure we do. Are you looking for, like, the miniseries or just her in issues of X-Men? Either way, I can try to hook you up. All right, I'm going to take down the ebook. Well, actually, I'm not going to take it down. I'm going to take the $3 price tag off of Evil Ernie. We're just going to leave him there. I'm going to put a book on top of it. If you buy that book, you also get the Evil Ernie number one preview book. This is Invincible. Awesome image series that is sadly about to end. This is Image or Invincible issue 75. This is the retailer incentive variant cover. Um, basically, the regular cover had Invincible in the uh, blue. And uh, black suit. This is him in the classic yellow, blue, and black suit. Which, if you've ever noticed about, it is the image logo. Across the neck is the bottom of the dot of the eye. And then it's got the piece underneath. He actually has the image logo as his suit. Which is pretty funny. Anyway, 10 bucks, Invincible, issue 75. And you get that Evil Ernie number one back there for just $10 as the ebooks. All right, you're welcome, Maurice. Um, we'll have an invoice for you in the morning. Everybody who does the invoices is out for the night, so after all this sell's done in the morning, they'll take care of it, and they'll get it to you. Thank you much. Yeah, it's stuff I like to hunt, though. All right, Dana, I will see what I can do. It has some X-Men down here somewhere. Just got to find it. Well, the price is 24, which is lower than what it was marked at. So I feel like the price is right. Let me bring it up close to the screen and I'll show it off to you. We'll see if the condition is right for you. As you can see, it does have some spots, but for $24, I feel like it's a pretty good deal. All right. Thank you, sir. Let's see what else I got down here. Armando wants to know when you buy Monday's murders. 
Um, all we had, Armando, was issue five and six. That's all we had for the series. Oh, we will, Maurice. Anything you buy tonight will be put together, so when you get sent your invoice, it'll all be in one. All right. Uh, $5.95 up to 30 comics. So for your first 30 comics, just $5.95. I think you'll find that's one of the best, uh, best deals going on the Facebook Live stuff. This is uh, Uncanny X-Men number 136. It is from 1980. Child of Light and Darkness, the final phase of the Phoenix. The death phase. That's right. Don't miss this special issue containing more shocks and surprises than ever before. You got the death of the Dark Phoenix there. Always good. That is uh, $24. And uh, this one does have really good condition. In the corners, the spine looks great. No discernible wear. Uh, the colors are a little faded. But otherwise, that's it's great. i just show you there. It is $24 bucks for the price. You're going to have trouble beating it. That is the G-Book. That's right, Thomas. Ooh. <laughs> it is a good one, man. It, that is a cover. Of course, it's, you know, they've used that cover pose. You'll see all over the place. Superman holding Supergirl. Cyclops holding uh, Jean Grey. Maurice, since you know what we can grab that cover. What would I grade it as? Ugh, that's a trouble, man. I don't know. Um, condition of the book, I would say very fine condition. Very fine to very fine plus condition. Um, I don't know what the little, the color is just a little off, just a little worn. Uh, I don't know if that, you know what I mean? I don't know how much grading that changes, um, but I'll show it to you up close. I don't know. What do you guys think? And under some light, some of it might be because this light's shining me in the face. I <laughs> just brought my eye holes. Um, when I had it around there, it looks darker. I don't. I don't know if the color fades even really a thing, or if it's just in my head at this point. Oh, he already had it out. I didn't know he already had it out, or I wouldn't have put it out. Hmm. I say it's probably pretty close. It's it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I would say uh <laughs> I would say closer to maybe seven and a half to eight, just to play on the safe side, but I don't know. Uh nope. He was selling it for twenty nine bucks. I actually knocked five bucks off of it. I saw there was a tag on it, but I didn't think it was from tonight's. So I might actually have that X with Emma Frost back here if that's the same box that this is.
It's not in there, sadly. <laughs> yeah, it's like a hundred dollar book. That's legit. That's right. I saw the uh, the picture from I guess it was Entertainment Weekly with uh, Jean Grey like that with the flames. It looked cool. It looked cool. So, let's see. All right, let me put out some other stuff. Uh, Secret Invasion. Number one, second print for three bucks. I'm going to take that down. And I'm going to put out The Adventures of Superman, issue number 500. This is the one that was polybag in the white polybag. This is the return of Superman from the dead. You want to see how a man shows back up, the Kryptonian? If you want to see a man with a mullet, this is the issue for you. It is $5. That is the F book. All right, the H book for six. That is the Conan the Barbarian. That is the final issue of Conan in the Marvel Comics. I'm gonna take that down. Maybe, maybe. I feel like I shouldn't have to bundle a hundred dollar book for twenty four bucks though. Probably end up pulling it down. This is uh, Batman 630. Batman 630, the last straw. And that is him taking on, I guess, uh, the Scarecrow would make the most sense, right? Uh, it is um, Dustin Nin does the artwork. He also paints the cover, as you can see. It's only $3, that issue of Batman. What what are you uh what are you sold on, Maurice? The uh, X Men. Give me some bags of doors, please. H three. All right, Armando got that Batman for three. Thank you, sir. Makes room for this book I'm going to put out. All right, X Men for twenty four. Thank you. Okay, so the next book, three dollars. This is Uncanny X Men four hundred and fifty three. Is that Greg Land? Yep, Greg Land cover of Wolverine on a motorcycle. Pretty awesome. Three dollars for that. That is the G book. Batman character would cool if it wasn't made by DC. What? You're ridiculous, Colin. Batman is awesome. Flash is also awesome. Most of DC is. Actually, DC Comics, right now, if you were to go to the shelves and just start reading Marvel and DC Comics, I think you're going to find that a lot of the DC are a little uh, higher quality, my friend. <laughs> G3 to Dana. Thank you. Okay, this was up for 30 earlier. This thing's worth 55 bucks. He had it out for 30. This is uh, the Marvel Spotlight on Star Lord. The saga begins. This is issue number six, 40 cent cover. It is from 1980. This is the very first time the origin of Star Lord was ever told, is in this comic. 
Um, there's also a chance this is the first time he was in a regular size comic as well. His very first appearance is actually in one of the Marvel oversized magazines. So this might be one of the first appearances of Star-Lord in an actual comic, like comic-sized comic. That doesn't make any sense, but hey, you get what I'm saying. Uh, anyway, it's supposed to be good 55 bucks. He had it for 30 earlier. I'm not going to mark that down much, but I figure, hey, we might have a different audience right now. And uh, it's a really cool comic. I mean, let's face it. The dude's you know, going to be Infinity War, obviously. This is uh, $28. For that one right there, that is uh, the Marvel Spotlight number six featuring Star-Lord. I know, man. Maybe. It's a rumor right now, so we don't know. We don't know. But uh, we'll see how it plays out. It's not a good day for Netflix. That's for sure. That's why this whole Fox and Disney thing's happening. This has nothing to do with them wanting Wolverine. They want everything Fox has so they can put it on a streaming service with Disney to compete with Netflix and Hulu. So those guys, they're probably getting a little antsy right about now. All right, it's after 6. It's 6.40. I need to do a giveaway. I'm going to find something to give away to you guys. Let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Here's a $10 comic I'm going to give away. This is Spawn the Undead number one. We're going to give that away for free. For free. That's true. The FCC vote is the more important of the two. Speaking of, if you guys went on and... uh. Did your due diligence to uh, keep the internet free so we can keep having sales without it jacking up your internet bill? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the net neutrality, that's a big one. Um, I don't even think it should be a problem. Like, it shouldn't even be up for vote. It shouldn't even be a thing. They should just be like, nope, we're not going to do that because we saw what it looks like in these other countries that monopolize theirs. And, uh, I mean, I'm sure all the companies are super thrilled, but it's so stupid. God, it's so stupid. All right. You got me a name? All right. Armando... Armando has won the Spawn the Undead number one. Everybody congratulate Armando in the feed. I guess you have to put their names on. Oh, because I don't remember them. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I just, I'm not a fan of any, it's just so ridiculous. Knowing that right now, like, when I'm at home, I can just, I use my Apple TV, watch whatever I want. I can get on my phone at the same time. I mean, I pay, I pay for more internet. I pay for high-speed internet. That's, that should be it. Like, I pay for the high speed I can get at the house. It's what I want. But, uh, you know, my AT&T phone service, I got unlimited data. Like, I pay for that. I don't want to pay for tiers on top of that. That's ridiculous. I want to be able to do everything at once. One big argument that I heard, which is great, and is just another one of those things, is that there are so many schools that uh, are underfunded, and so like these private schools and people that can bring in special teachers, have money for all specialized equipment, no problem for them. All these, a lot of other schools that can't do that, the internet allows them access to a lot of resources that uh, really help with teaching. However, those resources don't make money for companies, so they're not generally YouTube or all these other advertising things. So they will get the lowest streaming possible for any of that stuff. And it's going to be garbage. So I don't know. There's a lot of stuff like that to think about. Like it's just, yeah, I don't know. I might feel different about it if I was like a massive shareholder in whatever, but I'm not. So this is uh Superman in action comics, action comics, six ninety five. It's got the raised foil cover. And uh, here you have uh, Cauldron, 
And inside of him, you see, uh, well, not inside of him, that'd be gross. Uh, just a mirror image, a reflection, you see Superman. And uh, it is shiny, and it does have the raised cover. And it's just going to be $3. $3 for Action Comics. Same, Wiley. Same. <laughs> Generally, my job is completely web-based for the most part. But even out there, even out in the main store, we have to have the internet for our POS system for all that stuff, which means that we may we we would may all have to sudden ch charge even more money for our internet. We already pay we already pay a ton to keep this thing streaming heavy out of a special modem back here and then we got one up front as well. But just to keep our POS running and everything. It's H3 to Jonathan. Thank you. That's right, Shiny. What number is Invincible? Robert, that is Invincible 75. That is the retailer incentive variant cover of Invincible 75 for $10. Not only that, but it has a bonus book behind it. An Evil Ernie number one. Any lenticular covers? Um, I will keep an eye out. I don't think I've got any back here, but I will keep an eye out for them. If I see any, I'll put them up. I do have another shiny cover. This is Gen 13 number one. That is the uh, Jim Lee variant cover of Gen 13. It's a special edition. Nice and shiny acetate front and back on this. First printing Gen 13 number one. It's tagged 10 bucks. Nope. We're going to put it out for $6. Robert got the Invincible and the Evil Ernie there for 10 bucks. Thank you, sir. That was a good purchase, my friend. That's right. Jim Lee is pretty sweet. Jim Lee, who runs DC Comics and draws exclusively for DC Comics. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Let's talk to Jay Collins on the phone today for, I think, the first time. I think the first time I talked to Jay that I can recall. It may have been way back at the other store. We're doing the auctions, I may have. But uh, it's the first time in a long time. <laughs> I, I, I'd say... I don't know if he did. Jeff Johns played a big part in that. But, you know, they're part of the, the trinity of, uh, of DC heads now. Brian Bendis, man. Have they left? Have, do any of you guys have you guys heard any rumors or news about what Brian Michael Bendis will be doing at DC when he starts up writing there? I've I've not read anything about it, and I figured that my Facebook feed would be constantly full of rumors, like from Bleeding Cool and places like that. He's horrible sick right now. Bendis? Oh, that's no good. This is uh, Hawkman. Hawkman issue number two. It is from 1986. The Shadow Thief. They can't find him, so how can they win? Good question. Uh, Hawkman, of course, is playing a big part in Dark Knight Metal. The Hawkman Found miniseries is coming out. It's going to push Carter Hall back into the main DCU. This is issue two of the 86 series for just $3. That's going to be the H book. Oh, man. Well, hopefully got some of that sweet DC insurance beforehand. Man, there's all kinds of awesome stuff out here that I want to put out, but uh, it's already been out today, but some of it I'm going to put back out, guys. I'm just going to put it back out. This is New Mutants Issue 1 Variant Edition. This is the 1 in 15 Variant Edition featuring Magic painted on the cover. It's worth 15 bucks. We had it out for 15 bucks. I'm going to put it back out, though, for a little bit less. 
But, you know, we got different audience on the feed. So I'm going to put it over in the uh, E-Spot New Mutants number one variant magic cover for $12. That is E. This is from uh, IDW. I said a lot with comics, but there are like five or six comics that I consider to be like top echelon. Lock and Key is one of those. Uh, written by Joe Hill, the son of Stephen King. Uh, fantastic stuff. This is actually the first uh, miniseries here, Lock and Key. This is issue number four. Um, it's got, got the kind of the white cover there, and it has the gold Lock and Key logo. That's why it's a little shiny, a little tough to read. Um, very fine plus to near mint condition on this. And I'm going to put this out for uh, just six dollars. We're having that A book for two dollars. That is the Punisher War Journal, and I'm going to put up lock and key here for six. That's your cousin, Joe Hill. Are you related to Stephen King? What are we getting ourselves into here? I need more info, Colin. I need more. All right, to go with Iron Man issue 14 for uh, 17 bucks. I think it's $17, right? Yep. I'm going to add the Punisher War Journal to it. So now you get two books there for 17 Stephen King's your fourth cousin. That is awesome, man. So is it like a deal where you you see him semi regularly, or just kind of a kind of distant family action? All right, so how many of you have seen the uh, previews for Happy on Sci-Fi Channel coming up? I think uh, Grant Morrison is going to be on Jimmy Kimmel or one of the late-night shows here in the next day or so. Or maybe it was last night. I hear you, Mario. I hear you. We've been missing you, man. You can still hang out. Gotcha. John Clue. What's the comic in A? Uh, John, this is lock and key number four. First printing. Lock and key number four from IDW for $6. Which is getting a movie. Uh, the TV pilot, I did watch it. I got to watch it. Uh, that was one of my hookup deals for at MTV was I got to watch that pilot. That didn't go out. Um, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. Um, but the movie seems like they're going to do a lot better deal with the source material, so it should be awesome. doesn't see any family. We only talk to his wife. Well, weird. You had to get him to sign some books, man, and then just hustle those on eBay all the time. Oh, yeah, Jay. 
Jay, have you ever read Lock and Key? I think you'd dig it. It's it's pretty messed up, but pretty awesome at the same time. It uh it does a lot with kids, so it's kind of upbeat. But at the same time, there's just horrific things happening all the time. Their uh, dad gets murdered, the mom gets raped, and then almost murdered. The oldest son shows up, and like they eventually, the mom and the kids they leave to go, and they go to Key House, which is like in Lovecraft, which is pretty awesome. It's a place where their dad grew up. And there's these special keys. The keys go in these door locks and they undo stuff. So like one of them, um, the ghost key, you open a door with it. You open that door and go through it and your body falls down dead and you are a ghost and you can go back into your body through the door. But if somebody like closes the door and locks it and pulls the key out, uh, you're screwed and uh, stuff like that. It's pretty great. Um, the mom becomes, becomes an alcoholic through the course of the series. It was like a series of, of miniseries. They did like four to five miniseries all together. And uh, man, it's just all around really, really good. <laughs> well, we have the graphic novels, Jay. We have the graphic novels, my friend. That's what I'm saying. Issue one is $249. This is issue number four. First print for $6. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. Okay, Pen of the Amazing Spider-Man for 10. And I'm going to put up He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, issue number 16 for $3. It is a wanted poster with He-Man and She-Ra, and it's torn, and behind it is Triclops. That is the D-book for $3. D3 to John. Thank you, John. Uh, our next D book for three dollars. This is going to be Green Lantern issue eighteen from two thousand seven. This is part of the New Fifty Two. Uh, no, it was not. Issue seven. This was just when Jeff Johns restarted it. Never mind. This was pre New Fifty Two. This is a regular universe right here. Ivan Rice does the art on this. Tells the Sinestro Corps and Love Stinks, and that is uh, Carol as the Star Samphire standing on his throat. But he could be into that. This is Green Lantern eighteen. It's three dollars. That is going to be the D book. This is the uh, Steve McNiven variant of Secret Invasion number one. And that is a, a scroll. He's got both his hands together and inside are the heroes. Spider-Woman, Mr. Fantastic, Iron Man, Luke Cage, Wolverine, Sue Storm, and Spider-Man. Issue number one, first printing, variant cover for $8. I'm going to take this down for five. We'll put that out for eight. This New Mutants number one variant features magic on the cover. Of course, magic, uh, Ileana Rasputin is going to be a pretty heavy player in the uh, upcoming movie. Which does appear to be more of a horror type film, but pretty awesome. New Mutants number one can be just $10 for that variant cover.
here are uh, two books taped together that somebody claimed and then did not did not end up picking up. This is uh, All Star Batman number twelve plus a mystery book. Actually, it's not a mystery at all. It's a fourteen dollar Astro City number six. I don't know why these are together or the price that they are, but I'm going to put them both out. They're still together, taped together. Uh, $3. You get Bat All-Star Batman and that $14 Sin City for just $3. We're going to take on the Hawkman. We're going to put that out as H. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate the shares. All right. Cindy got H3. Thank you, Cindy. That was one of those, like, I don't know. What issue is D? Oh, hang on. we got some more stuff for people buying things. H3. Kenneth missed that one. J2 to Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Yep. What issue is D? Kenneth, this is Green Lantern issue 18 from 2007. It's $3 for that one. Good Star Sapphire on the front and uh, Hal Jordan. This is Michael Turner's Fathom issue number one. It is a first printing of Fathom number one from uh, Image Comics and Top Cow from 1998. It is $6. That is the H book. I already answered that. Hold on. All right. Here is uh, some early Marvel comics. This is Red Wolf, issue number two, 20 cent cover. Masked Avenger of the Western Plains. Stay back. You will not harm the girl. Not while Red Wolf lives, says Red Wolf in the third person. Day of the Dynamite Doom. And he is, in fact, throwing dynamite at these cowboys and blowing them to pieces. Not only that, this is in very fine plus condition. Like, this is spot on. This looks great. Um, I'm still going to put a little price tag on it, but... It is very, in fact, it's on, I'm going to come show it to the front. Like it is, this is very nice. Very nice. Of course, Red Wolf was resurrected pretty heavily during uh, Secret Wars. And they uh, haven't done anything with him in Legacy yet, but we'll see. This is Red Wolf Issue 2. It is $10. This will be the J-Book. There you go. Some 
Cowboys are getting murdered with dynamite. So we all know that Spawn is getting a new movie. It's going to be uh, produced by, uh, I think, Eli Roth. McFarlane is writing it, maybe directing it. I don't know. It's going to be creepy. They're going in a more horror vein. Uh, this is Spawn number two. The second issue of Spawn ever. Ever. That's it. Spawn number two. Uh, very fine plus condition. As far as I know, never read condition whatsoever. Uh, we actually have a pretty good selection of early Spawn in a uh, long box that uh, looks like it was like a dealer's box at one time. So a lot of these issues are together. This is one of them. $9. Spawn issue number two. It is from uh, 1992. We'll take on the Walking Dead 100 for 19. We'll put Spawn up there for nine dollars. So, I need to find some X-Men and some Storm. I got any down here yet. I think I got some. This is Swamp Thing issue at number six with art by Kelly Jones. You got Swamp Thing. Um, I guess that might be Constantine right there because you got Zatanna. You've got uh, the Spectre and the Phantom Stranger all on here. Maybe that's Alec Holland. It's really tough to say. I think it's Alec Holland. It is uh, $3 for this issue of Swamp Thing from DC Comics. Lynn Wayne, the creator of Swamp Thing, actually wrote this one. Get in the lock and key for six. Let me get out of the way. There we go. Three bucks for Swamp Thing. Yep, she's on the cover. I'm assuming she's on the inside as well. It looks like a number of uh, magic related uh, DC people are trying to take down Swamp Thing. There we go. Thank you, Jay. The next A book, this is The Flash, number two, number two, Wanted. And he's run through the snow, which makes me think of, you know, Captain Cold. It is uh, issue three from 2000, or issue two from 2010 for $3. That is your A book. That is issue number eight, Maurice. Issue number eight of Daredevil. That's the first appearance of Stiltman, who Punisher later murdered. It looks like. Have you tried backing out completely and shutting it down and coming back in? It's about the only way we know of trying to get it to work again. Condition on this thing is pretty good. You got a little bit of spine wear. Just a few spine spots. The corners look good. Um... There is some color loss in the reds. Um, looks like maybe where it was just out under light for a while or something. I'm not sure. I'll show it to you real close on the camera. though.
But that was normally tagged for well over 100 bucks. I put 70 on it. So, I figured it was a good deal. Yeah, that's my guess. My guess is whoever had it had it on display. It's probably my because it's really it's really well preserved otherwise. So my guess it was just out, you know. What's up, Raw? How are you, man? I haven't uh seen you in a bit. Kristen Vaughn it says she's watching. I don't know if she's watching or not though. She could just be clicking on it to share it. Mm, I don't know. Stuff to say. She doesn't comment, so it's who knows. Who knows? Okay. All right. So we're gonna move around the board here. Um, all right. What do we have for four dollars? Oh, Thundercats. Well, guess what? If you get Thundercats for four dollars, you also get. Sleepwalker number two, a man long rumored to get a Netflix series just like Moon Knight. That is the C book for four dollars. Two books for four. Cindy. Cindy. Got both of those. Thank you, Cindy. This is Happy, issue number four, the last issue of Happy. If you want to find out how that TV series ends, it's probably going to get you going. That is uh, $6, written by Grant Morrison, with art by Derek Roberts, who did The Boys. It's going to be on Sci-Fi Channel, I want to say, right around Christmas time. Stars, uh, I don't know, that dude from uh, Law & Order. I can't think of his name. Maloney? I don't know. And a computer-generated... Uh, blue flying big headed donkey fairy creature which is the imaginary friend of that little girl who's been kidnapped and uh, he's trying to uh, find her before the Santa Claus that kidnapped her uh, you know flays her up and stuff gross stuff he's also an alcoholic it's a whole thing it's pretty awesome it is pretty awesome Thank you for the shares, Dana. Appreciate that. We're going to do another giveaway in about 15 minutes. Hey, Christopher Maloney, I was right. Mostly. Wow, that doesn't really give you the info about the imaginary friend or any of that. <laughs> In the comic, I believe he's just a private detective. I don't think he's a hitman. But he's definitely a drunk. All right, this is Star Wars Darth Vader issue number five from the original Darth Vader series. It is a first print, and there's Vader locking lightsabers with two other lightsabers. That's right, his is over here. You got the two others. All crossing the streams. Um, it is going to be. Hmm. They have the first. Oh, on the uh, their streaming service. That's awesome. I may check that out when I get home tonight. This is the Flash issue number two from 2010. C six to Cindy. I like it, Cindy. Thank you. This is going to be Star Wars Darth Vader number five for five dollars. That is the C book. Yeah, Patton Oswalt voice is happy, which would be pretty funny. In the comics, the uh, the guy who kidnaps the girl is like a deranged Santa Claus, and uh, he kidnaps and kills a lot of kids. So like, she gets captured. Her imaginary friend runs off and finds this guy who can see him, 
why they get on with as the series goes, explain why he can see them. Um, but uh, yeah, man, it's the comic was awesome. I'm assuming the show's gonna be pretty good too. C5 D'Armando. Thank you, sir. Got the Darth Vader. They do, man. They do. They uh, Image is a big bulk of the stuff that I read. This is an issue of Cable. This is Cable number 81. Um, Wrath of the Undying. Nothing particularly special about this book. I'm just going to put it out for $2. Issue of Cable, that is the C book. They do. Have you guys read Paper Girls? The book is awesome. If you're friends of Stranger Things, Paper Girls, right up your alley. Same type of deal, kind of that mid-80s vibe to it. This is Journey into Mystery, issue number two. 20 cent cover price, A Tale of Mounting Menace by Robert Block, author of Psycho, Yours Truly, Jack the Ripper. Now, we've sold the Yours Truly, Jack the Ripper comics in the past. They were put out just a couple years ago from, I believe, IDW, um, adapting his book. Well, here, it's being adapted as a comic from the writer of Psycho. Not a bad, not a bad pedigree to have. And uh, the art on this looks pretty great, too. As you can see. Uh, there are some spine, some spine wear spots. Um, it is a black cover. You can see any type of wear. It's a little bit towards the bottom. Uh, but overall, pretty good deal. We're going to put it out for just uh, $6. Not only that, but I'm going to take back that. Uh, what was D, anyway? Was Green Lantern. I'm going to add this to it. So now you get both of those books for just $6 in the D spot. Oh, nice. So they've already started putting them out regularly then. Paper Girls by the writer of Saga. I don't know. Does Brian Vaughn write Saga? Or not, I mean, write Paper Girls? I guess maybe he does. Um, the uh, Journey into Mystery. Uh, Journey into Mystery, I want to say... Journey into Mystery eventually became Loki's book for a while. I'm not sure. They introduced a few different characters in those type of books. That, Marvel Spotlight, all those. Yeah. Yeah, they used those type of things around the time. Like, any character that wasn't, like, super hot... They'd put in that type of book. So Tales of Mystery, um, Marvel 2-in-1, different things. So they could try out new characters. Um, oh, yeah, Brian Vaughn does do Paper Girls. That's right. Cool. I've, uh, yeah, yeah, I like Paper Girls a lot. Paper Girls is one of those two that, like, to people I've recommended it to, it's one of the ones that, you know, people are like, yep, that was good. <laughs> Hey, Chad, how are you tonight, man? Let's 
getting up there. I'm a few issues behind, but it's the one. Uh, Paper Girls is like the one comic that um, my girlfriend like legitimately really likes reading. Like, so she like she insists that like even if I'm not going to read Paper Girls, like that I get Paper Girls every month that it comes out. So I always do because I want to nurture that part. I'm like, oh yeah, I read this comic, um, but it is really good. When am I seeing Star Wars? Jay, I might, I think Friday morning. I think Friday morning. Um, Thursday, tomorrow night, I'll be doing the sale till like 11. So um, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Friday morning, maybe try to hit Richmond. I think maybe they're going to have like a 10 30 or 11 o'clock show. Try to do it then. Too much money, need to get rid of it. Well, Chad, you've come to the right place. <laughs> Am I going to put out some Paper Girls? Actually, I hadn't. I just, it's just a good book. I was just talking about it. Um, I don't have any of the first issues, so really all I could offer up would be the graphic novels people interested in want to read it, but I'd gladly sell it to them. Um, but we do have a number of issues of Paper Girls. Yeah, we do have some available. If anybody would like to buy some Paper Girls, you let me know. Oh, yeah, my buddy, um, he reviews toys and stuff, but he got an invite to see early, you know, um, showing of Star Wars, I think, two days ago, and he was comparing it to, like, Empire Strikes Back, you know, like, saying, this isn't going to be, I don't want to say this is as good or better than Empire, but, you know, so, that's pretty high praise, pretty high praise. Okay. All right. I'm going to switch out. What is up, boys and girls? Every time I take over for Jason, it really illustrates how much taller he is than me, which is weird because it doesn't seem like it when we're talking to each other. But, like, his mic's, like, in my nose. And it's usually when it's me, it's, like, down here. Anyway, so let's see what we got going on over here. Um... I saw this. I might snatch this guy if you guys don't. Just because it has my boom magic on the cover. But this is New Mutants number one. One in 15 variant cover. Which means there's not a lot of these rolling around. So you should probably, considering that the movie is going to come out. Um, and it's already a deal for only 10 bucks, But it should be at least like 15 Um, You might want to snatch that up. Because once that drops... Everybody's going to want to know, hey, who are these guys? And everything New Mutants is going to be really expensive. Um, let's see. I'm like grabbing all my bias right here. Fathom, number one, really great story. Uh, Michael Turner art, obviously he, wrote, he drew it. He drew it. He wrote it. Um, really good story. Uh, R.I.P. Michael Turner. But... Uh, I think he is uh, one of those guys that gets a bum rap because he draws really good and he usually just draws like hot chicks. So, you know, he gets wrapped into like the whole Jim Ballant tarot thing where you think it's just like booby comics. But uh, Fathom's actually really good. Um, it's basically like a modern retelling of more like a sci fi version of Aquaman if he was a chick, but he was also a Jedi. If like. I don't know how, how better to describe it. <laughs> it's, it's weird, but it's a really good book. It's, it sounds weird, but it's really good. Over here we got Spawn number two. I mean, Spawn, number two. What's not to like about that? Unless you just don't like Spawn. In which case, you should rethink your decisions in life. Oh no, come back here. You got it? Yeah, Amy with the save. Flash, brightest day, number two. Um, Francis Manipul art. What's not to love about that? Uh, I got an excellent review on NPR today. That's what's up. Um, Can you remember what's on the Ooh, I'm pretty pumped about that too. That's going to be my birthday present to myself. To go see Star Wars. You can do that. Well, I can't say anything. My brother, my brother Ryan has it on my birthday for me. So. Nice. <laughs> Cable, number 81. Wrath of the Undying. 
I like this because Cable's actually a good character. He just gets drawn very ridiculous very often. So whenever he has like human like proportions, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see what it's our D book. Journey into mystery with Jack the freaking Ripper. How is that only that's still sitting here? It's only six bucks. Jack the Ripper action in a comic book. And, uh oh, I don't think I was supposed to move that one because I think that just re was a. Uh... And there's like a, it's a double. There's two bucks there. Get up on that. I'm going to take this one down though. Even though I like cable. We're homies. But you got to, you got to step to the side. And instead, I'm going to put up this Gru. No, this is Cerberus. I'm going to put up a Cerberus spawn cover. Uh, it's spawn number 10. Only six bucks. Variant cover. It's pretty cool. Cerberus and Spawn hanging out, doing Cerberus and Spawn things. I don't know exactly what that'd be. Maybe they're gonna kick back some beers. Maybe they're gonna, I don't know, play beer pong or go fishing in hell. I wanna put out some paper girls. Colin, I would not not expect Jay to put out some uh, Paper Girls. He's very much a fan of that book. And we do have it, so if you want it, and you want to buy some, let us know. Also, we still have these guys back here, if you forgot about these. Amazing Spider-Man Fleer trading card packs from 1994. Eight cards per deck, only a dollar a pack. Um, there's some pretty awesome stuff back here. Connectable art. It's very Maximum Carnage era. So you're probably looking at, you know, like the Sinister Six cards are going to be in there. Venom, Carnage, Shriek, Doppelganger, uh, probably Deathlock, those kind of guys. Um, so bust one open. You know what I'm saying? It's like a mystery pack. It's, a, it's like a mystery present for yourself. It's only a dollar. So it's like... What have you done with a dollar lately? I bet you haven't even got like a double cheeseburger for a dollar because dollar menus aren't even really a thing anymore. It's crazy. The price of bad free food is too damn high. Um, so I'm gonna put that to the side. This is a random one. So I'm gonna. Aw, oh, yeah, Sandy Carson, I got you for your. Is it oh, my bad. I thought it was like my glasses. But see, the way my glasses are set up. I'm just kidding. Um, but we got you, Cindy. And I'm going to slide this one up in chill. This is going to be our new B book. No, it's fine. It's fine. You can kick it. This is going to be our new. Do we have any toys? Yeah, Yeah, see, Cindy knows what's up. Here you go. Yeah. All right, so. I'm going to replace Red Wolf with an autographed Marky Plier number one. Only 19 bucks. Because YouTube makes ours. Apparently that includes Markiplier. Which is cool. You should get one. Because it's autographed. How many autographed items do you own? Do we have any Slade? Um, i tell you what. I will take a look. For what Deathstroke stuff we have. Because I assume you mean Deathstroke and not like Phantom Rider. Although Phantom Rider is cool too. Um, 
I tell you what. Put a pin in the Slade situation. I'm not seeing any back here, but I know where it is out there. So when Jason comes back, I'll run and grab you some if you still want some. Okay? Let me know in the comments. But for now, I'm going to put out another book. And this time, it is going to be... Well, you know what I could have done? I could have just done this. All right, spawn number two is going to go down for a second. Now I'm going to replace that with a Lady Death. Merciless Onslaught number one. Plus size comic. Pretty sweet cover. <laughs> okay i got you i will i will bring you some of that bring you some of that good good um hey, look at we got another trade card pack this one actually has venom on it on the cover that's pretty dope your phone still ring after hours uh yes and no are you trying to pay for your sales items because those You'll have to do tomorrow. What issue is the lady death? Merciless onslaught number one. Number one, uh, I'm pretty sure it's when she first started when uh, she moved over to like Coffin Comics. Um, I don't know. I'll Wikipedia it. But uh, it's actually pretty dope. I mean, I'll show it up close so you guys can get a good look at what I'm talking about here. Indubitably, it is not quite after hours yet. So, Tommy, if you need to call to pay for your stuff, um, if it's from stuff from today, you'll have to call tomorrow. But if it's stuff from yesterday, then you can call today. What is J? J is Markiplier, number one, autographed. By the YouTube star himself, he's like uh, like a PewDiePie type cat, like one of those dudes, you know, like games and stuff. Um, makes funny videos. The kids love him. Alan, I know it looks that cover is dope, isn't it? And like I said, it's not a regular sized issue. It's like almost like a graphic novel, like a like a plus size, like an annual. Like a giant size annual, like the old school ones, like New Mutants number one type stuff. So it's not like a regular issue. So I would uh, hop on that, especially for only nine bucks. I mean, it's a really good deal. If you collect Lady Death, especially, it's a really good deal. Um, got a whole bunch of dope spawn stuff back here so I'm gonna put some of this stuff out um, all right fathom I'm sorry y'all hurt my heart making me take that one back but it's okay water's not for everybody But what we are going to do is your new H book is going to be Medieval Spawn Witchblade number one. That's right. Medieval Spawn 
and the Black Plague era. Well, Alan, the only problem with that is that there's this thing called buyer's remorse where you hold on for too long and when you start trying to claim stuff, somebody just like snaps all your stuff up right before you get it. As the people who've been here for a little while, I don't know um, if you have, but it's very real. Very, very real. Sometimes you just got to strike while the iron's hot. But anyway, um, our new age book is going to be Medieval Spawn and Witchblade number one. So, Night Spawn and Black Plague Era Witchblade teaming up to fight some sort of unholy terror because that's how they get down. Check it. And it's only six bucks. That's pretty sweet, especially for number one team up of two awesome characters like that who don't very op often get to be in mini series together. But I will say this, Alan, patience is virtue, so that's commendable. But you should totally just buy that Lady Death because you want it. <laughs> so what are you guys up to tonight? Besides from uh, Star Wars. I'll let Jason finish that Star Wars conversation when he gets back. I feel like I'd be intruding on uh, the camaraderie that was going on there. Though I'm super pumped to see it because uh, Kylo Ren is my jam. And my birthday's Christmas Eve, so this can be my birthday present to myself. Your Christmas present? Yeah, yeah. Aww. My birthday's in 12 days. Um, let's see here. Oh, snap. Do we got like not have any Guardians of the Galaxy fans? Cause I mean, it's the first Star Lord comic. This is like Peter Quill, the real deal Peter Quill, and his first origin. Um, it's pretty cool. Like a lot of there's some stuff that people don't know about Peter Quill. Like uh, when he was originally created, he had an element gun and a super suit. That made him super strong. Um, I don't see why we wouldn't want those things. Because who doesn't want to be super strong. And who doesn't want to have a gun. That like can shoot a lightning bolt. And a tornado. And an ice blast. And set somebody's hair on fire. So I mean. I've only seen one Mark. I've only watched one trailer for it so far. And. That was all I needed to watch. Because I don't really want to see any 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 real moments of the movie before i actually go and watch the movie because why would i like i i want to go in blind i want to really enjoy it i'm going to stay away from like all the reviews until i get to see it myself and it's going to be awesome and i'm going to be happy i did that all right let's see here Okay, Modok and the Thinker versus Iron Man. This is an old school book. I'm gonna throw it down. One, two, two. Well, here you go. Star Lord was super convenient just now. New G book. Be only twenty eight bucks. Yeah, Modok, check this out, right? Modok and the Thinker teamed up. And the thinker made a robot body to go with Modok's insane head, which is actually a pretty dope combination because even though Modok looks like a complete Goomba, uh, it's pretty powerful actually on the psychic front, like Charles Xavier, but like evil science nerd. So if you put him, you know, super strong giant robot body, probably has like lasers, poison gas or something, you know, 70s Marvel. Giant robots weren't just giant robots. They always had some ridiculous thing that they was added onto it. And then you smack Modok on top of that. It's pretty cool, actually. And uh looks like Tony Stark is getting the business. So that should be an interesting issue. Um... Shiny. 
I'll save that one since I just put out an Iron Man. Nah, I'm gonna put this one out. Uh, I'm gonna double up on my Iron Man game. I lied. But this one, I'm gonna do a little bit cheap. This is gonna be on the, on the low skis. This is a secret inv- Oh man, you guys are tripping. This is a dope cover. Secret Invasion didn't get a love. It didn't get a lot of love. I don't. I don't really know why. I liked it. That was cool. But I also, uh, I like Bendis. I don't. I don't mind him. That's not the one I want. This one's the one I want. Invincible Iron Man number one oh eight. Menace of the Rampaging Growing Man. Originally. A Thor villain? Or was it Avengers? One of the two. Uh, it's one of Kang's toys. And here's the growing man kicking the crap out of Tony Stark and Hank Pym in his yellow jacket costume, which is probably his coolest costume. I'm going to smack that right there. That'll be a good new F book. So what are you guys planning... You're going to be traveling, you're going to be cooking Christmas dinner at home. Um, what do you got going on for your, your holiday festivities? That's uh, what's I gotta say about that on the Christmas Eve thing? <laughs> straight, straight up. Oh, bouncing all over the place. What about you? Um, depends. I, um, maybe I'll be at work or open. Um, if not, I will be at home. My wife is very traditional when it comes to holidays any any excuse to take pictures or decorate or cook ridiculously sized meals my wife is all about because she's very like Amazing. yes she's a, exactly she's a great woman and she's also corny so <laughs> she's gonna make me like decorate the house more and we're all gonna like wear matching pajamas or something sometimes it works out pretty dope like one year uh i talked her into doing batman pajamas for christmas so me, my wife, and my two children, we all bought different sets of Batman pajamas, but they were, like, still matching sets of Batman pajamas, and that's, like, what we wore all day, and, you know, like, ate dinner, and, you know, presents, and all that stuff, it was awesome. She's one of, the, she's, she's, like, one of those, like, uh, my wife likes to, like, when me and my son were matching clothes, uh, I don't, but I only have to, like, twice a year to make her happy, and that's kind of, like, my job, so, you know, whatever, Christmas, Easter. I can deal with having a twin. I mean, it's not like we don't look alike already, so. Working. Ooh. Boston, that's a bummer. Jared, will you get me a program to use for your live feed? Thanks. Um. I have no idea. Yeah, me neither. Um. Facebook? Yeah. Facebook Live and, uh. Well, I can't go over there. I can't check it now because I, I can't interrupt the feed. But if you send that message to the page and a uh, private message, that will get answered. Um, just not right this second. Yeah. <laughs> just not right this moment because I can't. In order to check that, I'd have to mess with the feed and then that'd be no bueno. So. Trying to alert our trade secrets. I'm on you, Mr. Whitney. <laughs> it's okay. You're welcome, bud. Like I said, just message the store. Um, so what are you guys looking for? Aside from the death stroke, because I already got that up here. 
I'll be getting those. But what else are you guys looking for? Yeah, Alan, yeah, Alan Stevens. My wife is the same way. We actually, I've had, actually had to have a talk with her about the fact that she cooks too much food. Not that I mind because I eat a lot, and depending on what it is, my kids eat a lot too. So it's not like food ever goes to waste in our house. But it's like we're gonna have to start donating the stuff to like homeless shelters and stuff, because yes, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. But the thing is though, how it worked out. Now that you mention it is that uh, my wife and my daughter volunteer at the little homeless shelter like twice a week. So all that extra food goes boom right over there. Aww. Batman New 52. Any particular issues or just New 52 Batman from the beginning and up until rebirth and all that good stuff? I'm a lucky dude. <laughs> yeah, they do that. Let's see. We also have. You guys want like some doom, uh, some pins? Like this sweet guy. Hold on. Uh, exit stage right on myself. Doomsday clock pins. We have some. Uh, drowned. I'm going to show you some of these guys up close so you guys can... What up, Josh? How you doing, man? Constantly looking for anything, everything. Well, perfect for you is this guy right here. Let me show you this up close and break down why this one is important. If you are super X-Men. Oh, snap. Never mind. I don't have to explain it to you. But it's a bit... Magic's my fave, so that's dope. There you go. Now, yeah. We need ourselves a new ebook. No, nah, because he probably is finishing up a couple things for me real quick. Because there was somebody that wanted to sell some games and stuff. Um, how about some Squadron Supreme? I'm going to throw that out real quick. For just $10. This is a J. Michael Straczynski uh, run. Number one. Direct edition. Black and white cover. Some Gary Frank art. It's uh, it's pretty badass. So I'm gonna put that right there at the beginning of the ebook. <laughs> the tie dye guy. I'm not even gonna correct you on, on the name. From now on, tie dye guy. I know. <laughs> Thank you for the share. Thank you for the share. But yeah, New Mutants, really awesome. Underrated team. Um, I think because the, it's not the greatest name for a team, New Mutants is pretty generic. Like, if you were going to make an X Men team, you know, there's like X Men, X Factor, which is probably the coolest X name, X Force, Static X. No, X Statics. My bad. Static X was a band. Um, and they're like, all right, you guys are the New Mutants. It's like in that little on the nose there. But Ileana Rasputin on the cover with the Soul Sword. I love it. Mwah. Magic is my favorite X-Men. Except for Night... Well, yes. It'd be like Magic, Nightcrawler, uh, Archangel. And then like a gajillion people you probably never heard of. Yep, it is pretty sweet. Alright, let me get you another book.
I'm going to put this out while I'm looking for some more. Agent X is pretty dope too. Um, Agent X, Wolverine Origins. That's that's a good place to jump to, if you like the character Agent X, uh, Maverick. He was called before. Um, he plays a big part in Wolverine Origins. I mean, really, Wolverine Origins is one of those X Men stories that they really turn over like every rock in that. So it's like they took. I don't know what, 50 years or something close, not 50, 30, 30 something, 30, 40 years to finally tell Wolverine's background. And they did a really good job about it. It almost makes you wonder, like, why didn't they just do that before? Or if you actually Google any of that stuff, the old ideas for his background, most of them pretty bad. Uh, at one point, Wolverine was going to be a wolf, an actual Wolverine, like the state animal of Michigan that was mutated into a man. But somebody in the editorial chain was like, nah, son, that's not happening. Anywho. All right. Another book. Um, let's do Earth's Mightiest Heroes Avengers Unplugged issue number three. Who did the art on this one? This is... I don't know. They autographed it, but it looks crazy. But it's very 90s. Um, very curvy back, hot chicky. So it's definitely some 90s action. Um, but on the cover, we got Black Widow and Crystal of Inhumans fame. Right here on the cover. Girl, lady's not out. I'm assuming they probably start off on a normal day where they're just kicking it. And then some fools get to tripping. So they bust in the female Avengers form. Um, as you know, Black Widow, she don't play. And Crystal of the Inhumans is super powerful. And she's a princess. So she don't take no mess neither. So you put the two of them together. You know, they're having a night out. There might have been some body shots or something. Who knows? You don't want to mess with that. If you mess up their bad time, they're coming for you. And that's, boom, that's going to be your new B-book. It's only five bucks. All right. Is this spiral? This is totally spiral. I I got to, I got a couple of good ones for you. Uncanny X Force number twelve. I'm gonna show you the covers of these both up close because they are really dope. And then you... I I like it. I like it, Dana. You're on you're on top of stuff. I dig it. I also like Wolverine Origins because Deken is one of my favorite characters. And not just because he also has Ken in his name, like I do, but because he's ruthless and he's mean, but he's also charming. And that's a good combination, you know? Like, everybody likes a jerk, but they gotta be a lovable jerk. You know what I'm saying? You can't be too much of one and not enough of the other. He's a good mix. He's like sweet and low. Sweet and low? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, close enough. It sounded, it sounded good. It sounded good. Just let it, just roll with it, all right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you these two up close. Is it already? What time is it? It is seven fifty-five. Oh, that's we what it is. We forgot to give away. Oh. We're just gonna give away so it's already on Snap. No, it's all good. All right. So, anyways, those two covers. I'm gonna put these books together. This is Uncanny X Force number twelve and thirteen. I'm gonna bundle these two together for just. You know,
Yep. Punisher and Spawn. Or Spawn and Witchblade. Take those out. Put those up for ten. Just ten bucks. And we're gonna do a giveaway. So, actually, you're doing them every half hour, right? So we're gonna do another one at eight, or another one at eight thirty. Okay, so the next one will be at eight thirty. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take a second because I haven't decided what the giveaway is. Obviously, because I was just reminded that we missed it. And while I'm deciding what I'm gonna give away, yes. Like, share, comment with your favorites. Um, your favorite, your favorite Christmas food. But there you go, your favorite Christmas food. Eggnog counts if if you want to use that. But in the meantime, I'm going to be finding something cool to give away. So do those things, and I'll be right back. <laughs> oh Oops, steak and lobster dang steak and lobster calling you over here rolling you fancy huh mm -hmm. and then orange sugar cookies ham ham is my oh my god ham tamales I, I'm, I'm jealous I miss I miss really good homemade tamales I like good turkey too Really? Um, cause she's out of turkey from work and I came in a box of cooked turkey and I was so excited when I unwrapped it that mm -hmm. I thought she had given me a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking All at right. the time. She's like, Amy, open it. The turkey's in the ice. <laughs> I like it. I like your mom's style. Me, I would have just, I wouldn't have said nothing until you opened it eventually on your own. And then I would have been like, in your face, chump. How dare you disrespect my gift giving game. I have fun with fatherhood, if you can tell. All right, so our winner this turn is going to be, well, actually, hold on. Oh, that doesn't work. We're going to have to generate a new name. One sec.
All right, all right. So we have ourselves a winner. That is Danielin Hoffman. And you have won. Superman is dead. Who will join the new Justice League of America? This is uh, Justice League of Reverend No. 31, black and white cover variant. And this is one of the very first big, like, oh, snap, there's a whole new Justice League uh, thing going on post death of superman so that is yours and thank you for the likes and shares guys keep them up it is already eight o'clock which means you're already halfway to your new your net well your next giveaway so let's see what we got shown All right, so since the X-Men are what's hot on the block right now, this is X-Men number 150, 150th issue. You're welcome, Dana. Everybody congratulate Dana on the feed. It's going to be your new A book. This is X Men 150, X Men versus Magneto. Nuff said, because that's what it says on the cover. But also, as you can see, there is Cyclops and Swagneto, as I call them, Magneto, but Swagneto is way cooler. Uh, duking it out on the cover, there's uh, Storm holding what looks like an absolutely wrecked Marvel Girl, but it could be. Kitty, I'm pretty sure it's Kitty Pride because her hair is brown and curly. All right, but that's going to be your new A-book. It's only nine books. X-Men, double size issue, anniversary, only 150. Like, what? X-Men, 150, only nine dollars. This is dope. I'm going to do another Uncanny X-Men book. This one's going to be on the lows. It's going to be Uncanny X-Men number 478. That's going to be your new G-book. Polaris from The Gifted with her boo, Havoc. If you didn't know, uh, Eclipse is essentially a merger of two X-Men characters. Robert DaCosta, a.k.a. Sunspot. Now he goes by the name Eclipse because, you know, when shows are successful, the comics change to match and it's weird. But it happens. And the other one being Alex Summers, who's the younger brother of Cyclops. He was also in uh, X-Men Days of Future Past. And... No, he wasn't in that one. But he was in Apocalypse, and he was in uh, First Class. Anyways, though. Yeah, that's Kitty Pride. Um, this is The Rise and Fall of the Shi'ar Empire, Part 4. I actually read this myself. This is pretty dope. Um, Polaris, Havoc, Nightcrawler, a couple other cats, join Professor Xavier in space. Because there's some shenanigans afoot. Uh, namely... The third Summers brother, Gabriel Summers, is about to go topple the Shi'ar Empire and uh, just do a whole lot of cosmic anarchy. So the X-Men and the Star Jammers and a bunch of other cats, really, want to want to not have that happen so much. They're, they're so they're on the on this side of the fence where they don't dig the whole let's topple the way the universe works. I'm using a lot of hand motions today. I think it's just because I can like see myself. It's cool. All right, I'm going to put out one lastly uh, X-Men book, and then we're going to switch it over to something else. Uh, how many of you guys watched a little show called Legion? It's really awesome. Aubrey Plaza was in it. Um, David Haller, son of Charles Xavier, who's also batshit crazy, is the star of that show. And here's one of his early appearances in Legion Quest Part 1 of 4. Uh, 
I'm going to show this up close. Just so if you have an understanding of X-Men, you know that Storm is pretty boss. All right. Like, you don't, you don't want to mess with Aurora Monroe. But David don't care. I'm, I'm going to show you this one. Just shrugging off a lightning storm like Super Saiyan Goku or something. But like a crazy super well, I guess it's kind of the same thing. And uh this one's only gonna be six bucks. This is gonna be your new C book. Not a lot of love for the uh the image comics over here, huh? It's okay. It's okay. Maybe this is a Marvel night. Some nights, you know, some nights are image nights, some nights are Marvel nights, some nights are DC, some are a mix. You never know. Um, let's see. Bat man, that's what I'm looking for. Colin, what's your beef with DC, yo? Not that I'm not that I'm judging. I'm just genuinely curious. I like to hear others' opinions on comic books when they're honest and constructive as often as possible. Probably a big part of why I work here. So I'm not judging though. So feel free to answer that question as honestly as possible. Alright, these guys. Snap, somebody missed out on that one and this one. Okay, anyway. It's ironic that she said that you said that about DC considering what I'm about to put out right now. This is Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy meet Betty and Veronica number two. Boom. It's a thing. Archie Comics, DC Comics. This is Legion Quest number one. Uh, let's see. Number 320. 320. I actually don't have a preference between Marvel and DC. Um, when I was a kid... I was very DC for a while until like later 90s. Then I was very Marvel because I was that age group that got suckered into goofy shit like Maximum Carnage. Uh, yes, Quentin. That is 320. Number 320. Legion Quest, number one. Um, but now... I would probably say if I had a bias towards any company, it would be Valiant because I literally like a good chunk of my pull list is Valiant books that like, I don't even read the previews and stuff for them. It's just like Valiant has a new title. I'm like, add it. And that's just it. War Mother. I knew nothing about that book before I started buying it. It was only four issues, which is a bummer, but it was excellent. Valiant has been very so consistently amazing since 2012. Unilaterally, I, there's not a single book that I would not recommend from Valiant since their reboot in 2012. DC is the original and the oldest. Um, let's see. Should 
trivia question. Josh, I know you'll probably know this. So, or maybe you want, I don't know. But what was DC named before they were named DC? Comics. Well, Marvel was Marvel back then. Marvel was timely. Oh, no. I know DC came first, but they weren't called DC at the time. Colin, if you like Batman and you're not down with the whole Giddy Two Shoes, there's like a whole bunch of DC books you would really like. Uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws, because... Red Hood is basically Batman, except he's down with shooting people in the face. Um, and he hangs out with a Bizarro. That's pretty cool. And a rogue Amazon. Um, oh, they were called uh, National Comics. Um, anyway, though, uh, let's see what else. Nightwing. Nightwing's a little bit of a, a do-getter do type, but he's also a pimp. Um, gets him in a lot of trouble. His current girlfriend, Z, one of them is former supervillain. The other one is a master spy killer type that runs an organization called Spiral. See, yeah, face shooting is cool. <laughs> Amy's looking at me like, did this dude really just say shooting people in the face? Yes, I did. No, no remorse. All right, I'm going to take this down. Okay, yeah, I figured. <laughs> Alright, this is going to be the new H book. Actually. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> chicks that came in earlier they probably like well I'll, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> all right hey, man. Colin, oh yeah Colin. Colin. yes Colin though I do need you to call us uh, just really quick form our PM the store actually um See if he has a uh, invoice. He has like his store has like who else has been DM in the past? Like, so it was like those two. So it'd be good to like get their names and stuff on the store. So we can that'd be fine. But there's you know, but there might be. So Alright, so this will be your new H book and then what it did have a ten dollar tag on it. I'm not really feeling that. <laughs> so I'm gonna knock this one down to just Five dollars. It says Spider Man. It's one of the legacy newer issues that came out. This is a variant of number seven eighty nine, and it's five bucks. It's gonna be your H book, and then I'm gonna set up one more book. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna bust this one up. I'm gonna put Uncanny X Force number. 12 it's gonna be your new a book and i'm just gonna put it out for just maybe 10 bucks or two was a little too crazy so we'll, we'll just do this uncanny x-force number 12 three bucks and one second Okay, one sec. I'm going to fix stuff so I can see stuff.
All right, H5 is going to go to Armando. And this is going to be our new H book. Um, it's pretty good. It's a little bit of wear and tear to it, but not very, not not much. Not to, it's definitely like a you know more of a reader's copy or like if you got a graded, you obviously it's not going to be mint, but it would still be cool to have. It's an early issue of Superboy, Superboy one sixty eight, and it's only going to be five bucks. It's your new H book. Um, that's going to stay there for a second. Iron Man's gonna come down. All right, Uncanny X Men number one sixty eight, Life and Death two. This is an this is a classic one because this is like Chris Claremont. All the hype you hear about that dude when he was writing X Men. This is in that era, and the art is by Barry Windsor Smith who is the man. He's like one of the best Conan artists ever and his X-Men stuff is no joke. And that's only going to be 10 bucks. That's going to be your new F book. And which ones? Dana just claimed them. Did she say G3? I think. Yes. And then, uh, well, I put enough on there so you'll know where who that one goes to. Yeah, Dana G3. Alright, there we go. Alright, that's okay. Colin, you're good. Um, I don't know. Don't worry about it. I'm going to replace that book. This one, this is Matt Fraction X-Men. This is around, uh, time Hope Summers was a thing. There was mad hype for her. Um, how that turns out, really, that depends on how you feel about Avengers versus X-Men. Um, and this is going to be your new book. It's going to be number G book. Number, oh, hold on, hold on. That's going to go right there. Amy, do me a favor. Um, you know where the sound bar is to like play music and stuff through? Mm -hmm. By the D and D spinny things. I grab my phone. It's like sitting right there. I totally forgot I left it sitting there. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm gonna move that over, chill. And put this uncanny X Men right there. Stuff. All right, this is another Uncanny X Men book. This one, this is gonna probably be our new B book. It's Avengers, wasn't getting no love. The special anniversary issue. Um, Definitely giant sized. This is. It's got a fold out cover. This is X Men number 130. Er, oh, <laughs> almost gave me a minor heart attack there. This is the other half of the pullout. So it's X-Men throwing down some Warlocks. There's Mero. Uh, I think Caliban. I forget the other dudes. Uh, Storm. Colossus. Wolverine on the other side. Definitely one dope cover. How can I further get the Archangel? His card. Who? Can I oh, Mr. Rodriguez. Yes, we're seeing him. I just couldn't, ha didn't have a way to see them uh, for two seconds because I had to 
do a thing. But we we can see you, dude. Um, did you claim something, or is there something that you wanted? Let us know in the feed. But anyway, all right. So the giant side X Men three twenty five with the like six page dope cover. It's gonna be our new B book. It's only twelve bucks. And just one sec, let's pull up the feed on my phone so I can see your comments up here. Because I feel it feels weird not to be able to see them. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Which I guess is okay unless I start replying to myself. And, and that's when stuff starts to get a little... Oh, snap. We do have another sale coming up. Or sale. Another giveaway coming up shortly. We're literally nine minutes away from the next giveaway. <laughs> you can hear myself. Aha. B cover. All right. One sec. Let's see if I got it back here. Not yet, Joshua. Every time I go through Flash stuff, I keep in mind that just because, for two reasons. One, one, we're both Army bros, so that's that's what's up. And two, I very much admire the fact that you're dedicated to old school stuff. Us old, old heads got to stick together. So when the original Flashpoint comes through here, I'm going to put it, make, an, uh, make a mental note to put it somewhere to be like, hey... Josh, guess what we got? But I will see about that. Um, the other Betty and Veronica I've found is Betty and Veronica number one with the A cover. So if you want that, let me know. All right, I'm going to throw up some Fantastic Four because why not? The Fantastic Four is awesome. Uh, they're on their way to coming back, especially especially now that Disney has all of their, their eggs in one basket. The Fantastic Four, the X-Men, Avengers, all in one shared movie universe now. So... Be excited. We we so excited and it's not even Friday. I'll give a free book to anybody. I'll, I'll well I'll give away a book. If you can tell me where I stole that line from. But it's my choice, so don't be like, I want a Hulk 181. But you'll get a prize. You can tell me what song that we so excited and it's not even Friday comes from. Oh snap, what just happened? No. Yeah, I'm telling Colin, get up on this berry, yo. Uh, unfortunately, no. Here's why. Um, mostly because you can't suggest prices because we're not allowed to haggle. Uh, if you want to do, like, auctioneering type stuff, you have to basically have a license because the state of Kentucky is not down with that unless you have an auctioneering license. However... Give me a second. I'll think of something good to get around that. Very well. Technically, not her. I don't remember the girl's name either. I know her last name was Black. I think it was something like that. But it's uh, 
a parody of that. Um, I will give you a hint that it involves Barack Obama. Okay. You Googled that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like the most obscure thing. Yes. What was it? As, uh, well, I said, we so excited. and not even Friday. And it's a line from the this dude named Alpha Cat that did uh, the acceptance speech for Barack Obama in his second election. And he just like threw that in there. Because he was like rapping about how they caught Osama bin Laden and got him, you know? Uh, so I was like, I don't know. I was like, yeah, you can figure that out. And she totally did. Good job. <laughs> um, what are you doing? Uh, let's see. Okay. So... But that's okay, Kenneth. I got you, though. Um, so, for the trivia question answer, I'm going to be giving you this. This is a True Believers number one. This is a Phoenix Bazaar Adventures. Obviously, it's not the original, but it's a reprint of the story. The Secret Lives of X-Men from the Marvel uh, Magazine Group number 27. This came out in July forever ago um basically just kind of goes into this you know uh gene has a solo adventure there's some atlanteans a tuma shows up at one point tuma's really awesome i don't know if you know about a tuma basically like a evil submariner um Okay, also, Kenneth, I'll be straight up with you. Even if we could haggle on that one, there's no way that was going to happen. Because both of these are like $6 books. So for me to give you uh, Betty and Veronica, Meet Harley Quinn, one and two for $7, when I already had one marked for $6, that'd be giving you the second one for a dollar when it's like a $6 plus dollar book. We give deals, but that's crazy. That's not, it's like, uh, it's losing money. That's not the same. I'm surprised. Honestly, I I didn't say that you couldn't Google, but I was surprised that that actually worked out that well, because there's so many parodies involving the president that were former president, I should say. Sorry, sorry, I don't want to offend anybody. I also don't want to talk any politics. So if you're if you get pissed off, that I'm talking about Obama. Like, remember that I'm talking about a song from a YouTuber and not actual politics. Okay, thank you. Um. <laughs> but alright I will do Betty and Veronica 1 and 2 for they're 6 bucks a piece I'll knock a buck off and I'll sell you them both for $11 if you're interested in that but that really goes for everybody not just uh, Kenneth Rodriguez if you want 2 of them for 11 bucks, just say Harley and Betty or whatever combination of their four names. And uh, you can have issues one and two for just 11 bucks. Oh, snap. OMG, girlfriend. Oh, so your YouTube game is strong. Your Google Foo's probably strong. I'm scared of you, Dana. 
She's a fierce one. All right. In the meantime, I need to do another giveaway. Oh, snap. Okay. First, I need to find something sweet to give away. All right. First part's done. So remember, like, share, um, and what should the comment be? Comment your favorite, comment your favorite color. There you go. Comment your favorite color. And I'm going to go work on this whole getting the name generated thing. Oh snap, you're in the military too? What branch of service? Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I like these colors. I like these choices. All right, so be right back. I need to get a name. Oh, uh, yeah. So we have ourselves a winner. That is Quentin Adams Jr. You, my friend, have just won Army. Go, Army Strong. This will defend. That's what's up. Uh, what was your MOS? Put that in there, Nina. But anyway, all right. So Quentin Adams Jr., you're the winner. You've just won. Boom. Siege Dark Avengers. Uh, this has Dark Avengers number 13 through 16 and Dark Avengers annual number one. It is a solid read. Okay. I can dig that. Anyways, this is uh, it's awesome, essentially. If you like Dark Avengers or if you thought Siege was cool or if you just like really twisted, crazy stories, this book is is what you need it goes into why the century is so screwed in the head right before he tears Ares in half and literally shatters Asgard single-handedly so enjoy yes everybody congratulate Quentin because he definitely caught a dope prize on that one um, let's see. I was 13 Bravo though. So I definitely, definitely, definitely got love for mechanics because I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you ever worked on track vehicles, but they like to break down, uh, howitzers like to have weird things go wrong with them. And, uh, Yeah, that sounds like some army shit right there, Dana. That midway through AIT, you get switched. That definitely sounds like some army shit. Um, but yeah, I, I was only a 13 Bravo because they gave me a really fat enlistment bonus. So I was like, yeah, I'll blow stuff up for a lot of money. And then, like, after uh, I joined, I was like, oh, that's why combat arms is so expensive. Like, the bonuses are so big because these jobs suck. And nobody wants to do them. But they don't. I actually like it. I like being a grunt. I like doing grunt work. Although I had a really high GT score and a really high, I had like a 96 on my ASVAB, like three points from perfect or something like that. So I had a really long list of stuff I could have done. And instead, I was just like, I'm just going to go for the money. 
I should have been like a diver or something. That would have been awesome. Uh-oh. We got all... It's like, what? We deep. We army... We're not just army strong in the sale today. We're army deep. There's like five of us. That's what's up. All right. So our new C book. <laughs> Is that wrong with being a generator mechanic? Is going to be all new exiles number one. On the cover here, we got Psylocke tearing some stuff up with Juggernaut. 64. Actually, no, hold up. This is when the Exiles uh, in the Ultraverse mixed, like, crossed over. So, that's what's up. I forget this chick's name, but she was from one of the Ultras, like, uh, like Prime and Hardcore and those dudes. But, that's what's up, though. Ultra Force and New Exiles all in one book. Anyways, 64 pages. A new era of mutant excitement begins. Aptly titled. It's only going to be six bucks. It's going to be your new C book. Plus, any team that has Juggernaut on it is a book you should read. These guys are going to come down. Ain't that a bummer. Veteran discount. <laughs> um, I don't know if we have one. Yes, in store we do. In store we do. Which now that I, I don't know why I never asked that before I worked here. Like me and Marcus were both army. Our, Marcus, you didn't know that. Uh, the owner, he's also an army vet. He was an eleven Bravo and a drill sergeant, I think, for a time, but mostly infantry. So we know about that grunt life here at Maddox Games and Comics. So I'm just going to start throwing together some, like, uh, can you do me a favor and see if that's, see if there's a first print. Um, yeah, because that's totally not how to do that. Yes, Google, just Google it. <laughs> just, seriously, no, just put in Fathom number one first print, and then if the cover matches, you'll, you'll know. <laughs> Issue number again for C. Issue number for C is uh number one all new exiles number one um so i'm gonna just start putting together some loosely themed character bundles this is gonna be let's see they had this one up for i'm gonna, I'm gonna put that back up for this thing So we're going to call this one like the uh, Space Playboy Bundle. It's going to be Marvel Spotlight, number six, Star-Lord Origin issue, and Green Lantern, number 18. Uh, Carol, once again, taken over by the uh, Star Sapphire. I'm pretty sure this is like right after Hal and Carol break up and he starts dating this cowboy chick. That's uh, an all a fellow Air Force pilot, and uh, yeah, so that's that's how you introduce your new girlfriend to your old girlfriend. She gets taken over by a parasitic alien superpowered entity, and blows up your planes, and then attacks you like uh, mid date. So I'm gonna put that. That's gonna be your uh, your space playboy. I think that's, I think that's good. That's a good description of both Star Lord and Hal. But two bucks, eight bucks, that's going to be your new deal for your D book. Um, what else we got out here? Superboy Josh, I thought you'd be all over that one. Josh, what's going on, homie? And instead, I'm going to put up this. This is Fantastic Four Unplugged, number three. Susan Storm on the cover, looking like a badass. Uh, I'm going to show you that up close. 
you can really appreciate it. That's going to be your new iBook for five bucks. Not tonight. What? What's going on? You're just kind of just kind of lurking tonight. And then This one is pretty weird, but it's pretty cool. The Adventures of Spawn, the director's cut. And I'm going to read you a little bit of this uh, this description on the back because I've never, I've never even seen this book before. But one of the most powerful figures in comics made the leap from the print page to the internet with the adventures of Spawn, an entirely new reimagining of the Spawn mythos envisioned and created and, and created in the streamlined, frenetic style of Saturday morning cartoons. All right. So. Okay, I can dig that. I can dig that. You're just hanging. That's what's up. But anyway, so basically, like the ultimate Marvel version of Spawn, right here. Uh, this is volume one, I think. Yep, Adventures of Spawn number one. 48 pages, uh, all new Spawn stuff. This is the director's cut, on top of which. And I'm going to drop that. That's going to be your new H book, and it's only going to be five bucks. Um, F. Okay. Not feeling storm for that high. That's cool. Or at least maybe not that cover. But how about another Claremont book? This is a little bit more modern. Another storm cover. This one's by Greg Land. Uh, our, by Oliver Koipel. So it's going to be pretty on the inside and the outside. And this one's only going to be... This one's only going to be $3. This is says Uncanny X-Men number 449. Boom. Right there. Only $3. Ole! But that's also, I think, from the uh, like Utopia era of the X-Men. Where they uh, moved to San Francisco and then they joined all the mutants. They're just like, hey, there's only like 200 of us left. Just come, come to San Francisco. We got you. And they create their own island like Genosha, but it's not called Genosha. It's called Utopia. Oh, snap. Ain't it, ain't it. Killer Instinct number three. Killer Instinct number three, black and white variant. That's going to be your new F book. It is six bucks. Boom. Remember Killer Instinct? I know you do. It was like super popping back on Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo. It's making a comeback. Join. the first one though it's from the first one oh, i don't know i haven't watched it forever <laughs> i was not a i was not a land before time kid i was i was very much a uh my whole life is involved with land before time i still own all of them i uh, still sit and watch them <laughs> it's my mom knows that she wants me to come over and stay she puts one in mm -hmm. and then calls me over and then i come over like oh, i don't man. Smart woman. All right, so our new book. This is gonna be. What am I gonna put you? 
Or a new book? Mm, it'll be our new D-book. This is Superman number 29. One minute longer, part one. And it's going to be just two dollars. Two dollars. Give me a new D book. No, I'm gonna put that back. Remember, D is a two pack. You get Star Lord number one, Green Lantern under eighteen. Um, that just about yeah. There, you can stay. Yeah, I was not a land before that. I was a, I was more of a Thundercats, Voltron, uh, kind of kid. Power Rangers. It's really weird because now that I have a child, he likes all the same stuff I used to like, and I never, I didn't even do that on purpose. Like, except for Power Rangers, I screwed up because I got tired of watching Paw Patrol. So I was like, hey, you want to try Power Rangers? And then now it's just all Power Rangers all the time. Like from t when he wakes up to when he goes to bed, he's like spin kicking shit. And like we got all the Power Ranger toys now. It's just Power Rangers nonstop. And it's always Tommy. Because Tommy's his favorite. Whether he's the Green Ranger or he's the Evil Green Ranger or the White Ranger. He doesn't care. It's just Tommy's his jam. It's like Tommy and then Zach and then... Jason and then Billy and then he doesn't care because I need to explain to him that just because he's a boy doesn't mean he can't like girl stuff but he thinks he can't so he doesn't care about the pink yellow and the ranger, yellow ranger <laughs> the pink ranger yellow ranger he just doesn't have time for them but the other ones he loves and yes Amy can attest to the fact that he every time he comes in the store his first thing he does is he shouts hi -ah, and he goes into one of his battle poses and it just it's just if I don't if I don't if I don't specifically tell him no karate, not like no running, not be quiet or anything, if I specifically don't if I don't say the words no karate, if he's inside the store, it's just karate, 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 karate. Hey, there's the cat. I'm gonna spin kick after the cat. I'm not gonna hit the actual cat, but he's just gonna chase it doing spin kicks. It's crazy. All the time. Huh? Quentin, you know the struggle, man. Red Ranger's just as bad. No, it's probably automatically saves. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I know. Trust me. I've been there. Yellow, Yellow Ranger is my wife's favorite Power Ranger. It was, it's mine because my older sister was always the pink one and she said I was a, I had to get rid of her because she was pink. Yeah. She was always freaking Mario. And because <laughs> I was the second child, I had to be Luigi. I you still to this Luigi. day hate Luigi because I was forced to be Luigi. I love Luigi. I just like green though. I never, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of red. Maybe I was a, maybe I was a crap in a former life. Uh, maybe somebody should have forced you to be Luigi, like every time. Nah, nah. Oh snap! Here we go. Here we go. Uh, this one's gonna be our new G book. Yep. Uncanny X Men's gonna go down. This is The Adventures of Superman, number 533, Superman and Impulse. All right, Carl Castle, Stuart Immelman. I mean, Eminen. Yeah, it's Eminen. That's weird because it should be, em it feels like it should be Eminen. But anyway, so they're together. They're racing, you know, mullet Superman and uh, Impulse getting together, doing some cool stuff, racing around the world, doing some super speed things only they can do. Little known fact... Bart Allen is so fast, he can create actual duplicates of himself out of the speed force. Not just like speed mirages like Barry and Wally and everybody else. He can make actual clones of himself of pure speed force. Yes. Very bizarre. And he's like hyperactive and immature, so it's like the last thing you want is 17 of that kid. And that's exactly what he can do. Um, this will be another Superman book. This is Adventures of Superman. I think this is an annual. This is also by Carl Ketzel. This one has art, though, by Barry Kitson and Ray McCarthy. It's about time. 
The Adventures of Superman and the Challengers of the Unknown. Thank you, Adam. Every share, every like and share shows you care. Mucho appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to put that down. This is Superman 508. And it's only going to be two bucks. Oh, see. Yeah, just two bucks. That's going to be your new F book. Um, B book. Take that down. Okay, we got any Spidey fans? This is one. Do you have PayPal? Yes, we do. If you need to pay for your items via PayPal, which you do? Well, actually, Adam, are you new? So I can explain exactly what information you need as opposed to just feeling pretentious and explaining a whole bunch of shit you might not need to know. Okay, so here's how it works. If you would like to purchase an item, you would just say, like, say, for instance, this is the G book. It is $4. Just say G, $4. Uh, in order to pay, you can either call the store tomorrow. We'll have all the invoices printed up, and you can pay over the phone with a credit card, or you can send us your uh, whatever PayPal, whatever email address you use for your PayPal account and a private message directly to the store, not in the feed, like during the sale, but go to the Maddox Comics Facebook page, message us, send your email address, and we'll send you an invoice for your items through PayPal. So, exactly. And that is also a very good point that my partner in Crime Amy just pointed out is that the earlier you pay for your items the next day, the more likely they will be shipped the same day. Uh, UPS, FedEx, all those cats come through the store at least twice a day, two times. So say you call at like, like 9 30, 10 o'clock, then there's a 90% chance. Well, like 99% chance your stuff is going to be like packed up and ready to go by like lunchtime. So you'll get it that much faster. Um, so basically that's how that works. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to know or need to know, any clarification on, just don't be afraid to ask. I will totally let you know. All right, anywho. Joshua Smith. Um, it's obviously been read a time or two, but it's pretty good. Um, I would say like fine plus. And also, I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw this earlier, but if you get 
the D book. You get Star Lord's first appearance in Origin. Well, not first appearance, but first comic in Origins. And you also get Green Lantern number eighteen because they're going to be going together. So that's a twofer. Yeah, basically, um, if you bought stuff and you didn't, don't pay for it, like, the next day, uh, you should definitely, definitely not let it go past the 48-hour mark. Um, basically, just pay for it, like, if, when you got the money. I mean, if you don't, there's a reason. Okay. There's an extenuating circumstance. We aren't heartless, but... Don't like order, like, you know, claim a bunch of stuff and then like hop on throughout the week trying to keep claiming stuff because when the invoices get printed out, they will see that you have unpaid merchandise and therefore you won't be allowed to claim stuff again. Okay. All right. So we're about to shut it down for the evening. We're going to do, let's see what I got out. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to do one we're gonna do board sale. How about everything on the board right now for, say, uh, what cover? Let me, let, me, let me double check this before I start this number off. Oh, I already saw what that was. All right. I'm going to replace this. Markiplier thing. I'm going to take that out of, the, out of the equation. This is what I was going to put up next anyway. So... Amazing Spider-Man, number 147, $10 book. And then... Which one, Mass? Spider-Man? The Infinity Gauntlet, number four. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, the Infinity Gauntlet, yeah, that was, that was earlier. That, that bit was gone. But I would do the whole board... That everything we got up right now, you can have for 25 bucks. That's it. Just 25. Um. Yay, nay. Hey, hey. Going once. 25 for the whole thing. All right, Cindy, we got you. And oh, snap. Sorry about that. But all right, uh, guys and gals, who loves you? Maddox Comics loves you. But we are signing out for the night. We will be back tomorrow.